Everyone, welcome to a post game edition of the Bolt City Podcast. Dave Pele, Josh Pele, Mario Heron. Once again, if you're just tuning in right now, the Chargers game against the Detroit Lions just ended. Detroit wins 41 38 over the hometown Chargers. And guys, there are just a bunch of feelings on this game, maybe more so than any game the Chargers have played this season. So, uh, Josh, I'll tell you what, before I even just start rambling, I'm just going to start with you. Impressions of today's game. All right, so the game just ended, so the emotions are real right now. I'd rather the team loses and the offense plays well than we lose and the defense plays well. Watching this team score that many points was good to see. Brandon Staley needs to get fired like now because he can't stop anything. That guy's St. Brown, number 14, he's pretty good. I think we talked about him leading up into the show that he's pretty good. Maybe that guy you kind of slowed down a little bit. He wanted whatever he could get, and then Gibbs and – Gibbs and Montgomery in the first half, they had so many yards rushing. The Chargers defense was just not there all day. Props to the offense for showing up and, and doing enough to win the game, frankly, but the defense was a no-show. I mean, they forgot to show up to work today. I mean, did they clock in? Um, I, I'll give them credit. They had like a nice red zone stop to start the game. You know, stop them, field goal. Fantastic. And then the floodgates opened and then never freaking closed. I do agree with you, Josh. It's fun to lose when the offense plays well. Because like, all right, at least it's entertaining. I get like my hopes up. It's not like the painful bad. It's the fun bad. But either way, what the Chargers needed to win this game, they got they got Herbert's Superman game. This was the game we look back and go, yeah, Herbert's a top five quarterback in the NFL. And you go, all right, point to what game? You pointed to this game. The plays he was making with no Palmer, no Williams, at one point, no Allen. And the play right after that, he just guns one to Gaten for a touchdown. He played everything. He was everything you needed him to be to win this game. Allen was everything you needed to be to win this game. Eckler did everything he could for you to win this game. But the defense, defense did not even do enough. The Chargers needed one stop, one stop, and they couldn't give it to him. And that's why the Chargers lost this game today. Okay, again, final score, 41-38. Defense gives up 41 points. Not good. They give up 533 total yards. Not good. They give up 177 rushing yards in the first half. Watching this game, like I, Josh and I happen to be watching on the same TV, and I turned to Josh and I said, "Are we about to get blown out in the first half?" And he just says, "Yes, we are." And I was like, "This is gonna suck. Like this is not at all what I waited my whole week for to see them get embarrassed and blown out at home." And then the Chargers started playing better offensively. They started playing better because as you bring up Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert didn't look like Justin Herbert at the beginning, right? He looked rattled. He looked like a rookie. He looked like a guy that wasn't prepared. Josh made a comment about, look at his eyes. Like, he doesn't even look like the, the look quarterbacks give. Guys, don't worry about it. I got this. There was no, I got this. This was like, man, they they are all over me, and I can't make an accurate pass, even the short ones. And then all of a sudden, he turned into the elite player that the Chargers pay him to be. At, guys, I'll, I'll be honest with you. As I'm watching, talent for talent, it wasn't even close. I mean, the Detroit Lions players are so much more athletic and better and faster and stronger. I mean, there was a play early in the game where they went for it on fourth and five, meaning the Detroit Lions, and they just pushed our guys right off the ball. And I went, oh, my God, there's no chance. And then they proceeded to, to run for 177 yards in the first half, which is exactly what all of us would have called. It doesn't take a genius to realize, man, we can run all day on this defense. Now, that being said, Detroit only had 23 rushing yards in the second half. So when you look at what what the Chargers did or what the Detroit Lions got away from what made him successful, Tony Romo made a comment saying how basically they brought guys down and and they made it the old Chicago Bears defense. I'm sure uh, Mario loved the 85 Bears reference in there. But at the same time, it did change the running game and made it so they were forced to throw the ball. Guess what? Chargers couldn't stop that either, right? And as Josh was saying it tongue-in-cheek about St. Brown, look, the guy's outstanding. He's one of the best weapons in the NFL. And so is Montgomery, and so is Gibbs, and Goff is extremely accurate. The Detroit Lions are a premier team in this league. I mean, believe it or not, the Lions are the real deal. And we all saw it in week one of the NFL season. Like, is this a a real team, or is this a team that just looks good on week one? I, I thought athlete for athlete, it wasn't even close that the Lions were that much better and that much more skilled than what the Chargers are. The first play of the game, I was watching it with Dave, is a, was a run to the right, and <laughs> they pushed the, every charger on the line off the ball like five yards. And we looked at each other and said, yep, it's gonna, it's not going to be good today. 
And it started off bad, man. It would start off really bad. But like Dave said, the offense picked it up. Are you aware that the Chargers scored a touchdown on their last five drives to end the game and they still lost? Impressive, Mario. Very impressive. Yeah. It's hard to do that. Really hard to do that, but they did it. Uh, Brandon Staley, I I'll give him credit on one thing. I'm not credit, but he's not working with great defenders. And I, I swear to I swear to God, dude, there's some of these guys on this team. You're like, how are you in the NFL, specifically in the secondary? They can't guard anybody. I don't know what Brandon Staley is supposed to do about that. It's not completely his fault. But when guys get wide, wide open, and like St. Brown has nobody around him on a lot of these catches, you're wondering what kind of defense are you running? As I got a question, what the hell is going on there? But credit to Herbert. He played great. I think a lot of people are watching this game because it's two high power teams with two really good quarterbacks. I just wish the defense would show up. And you could tell the difference between the Jets and the Bears and what we saw at the Lions today. That is a really, really good team that's going to win their division. They're going to be a force in the NFC. And they are Super Bowl contenders. They're, I mean, they played perfect. That offense was perfection. Ben Johnson, a genius, genius of an offensive coordinator. You mentioned it. The secondary for the Chargers was lost today. I mean, they were lost, and it didn't help Michael Davis before the game. Um, it, it was weird. He was telling he just wasn't able to play, it seemed like. Like he was on the sideline a lot. I know there was a report that he was sick on Friday, but apparently that rolled into Sunday, and him not being there was huge and you can tell right away what an emodium pill works fine just give him an emodium pill all right we'll stop it all right let's get the yeah. stomach under control you're a pro let's lock things up yeah hop on one foot jump over a river and you're good i remember learning about that in third grade as a old wives tale so i guess that works but yeah it was look the defense was lost and it hurt and it seemed anytime amon ross st brown wanted the ball he got the ball Anytime Ben Johnson wanted the ball to go some direction and golf wanted to go in some direction, they got it. And there was multiple instances, I think it was third and short, where he, Romo is preaching, goes, I don't know why the Chargers went zone right there. Why did they go zone? They should have been a man. There made no sense to go zone. Any veteran QB would be able to pick that up and make a play right away. And it did, and it happened. I guess the only bright side I'll, I'll say about this game is that the Chargers didn't roll over and die. Because I thought the same thing, right? Like the run game started early in this game, and I go, they're done. They're, they're simply done. It's just going to be LSU, Alabama, circa 2000. I think that was 12 against LSU when they just freaking ran them into the ground with Mark Ingram. Yeah. And I, and I thought that's what was going to happen. But they they came back. Like yeah, I said, Herbert put on his cape, you know, got the little curl in, in the front with the hair and became Superman. <laughs> it, yeah, I tell you what. The overall, when you look at all the games – you know, I was talking to Josh earlier today about the Patriots and Colts, which had to be the worst game of the week. And you're like, if sure. you're, you know, a European and you're trying to figure out why is this so popular in the United States, you're like, this sport sucks. It was, it was just a terrible, terrible game. And I'm thinking, if this game was in Europe, they'd say, the NFL, you got to put a team here. This is awesome. I mean, 41 38, they don't understand how, you know, the scoring works for the most part, you would think. And going, this was exciting. Back and forth, a lot of, uh, you know, physical game. Um, at the same time, a lot of scoring. If you like offense, this was the game for you to watch. It was frustrating because, as Josh made the great point there, that you look, you last five drives, you're scoring. You should be winning in the NFL. And, you know, I was joking kind of tongue-in-cheek. Hey, we didn't lose. We just ran out of time. But that's how it felt. Like, hey, we were going to score in the next drive, too. <laughs> you know, we, we had this. And it was extremely frustrating. There are games that we've spoken about as soon as the game's over where I, I just wanted to throw my computer right through the roof, you know, and just go, forget it, just chuck it right off the ceiling. And then there are games like today where I tell you what, there's an upside to them. Now, I don't know if I'm exactly saying, look, this is a team that's ready to win in the playoffs because your defense has to stop somebody. But there was a bright side to some of the things I saw today. Mario, you just said it a second ago. There was a time out there where the top three wide receivers for the Chargers weren't even on the field. Yet they're able to drive down the field and get in the end zone. And so that's that's a positive. And so I, I don't know what to say about this team, except it would have been great to go five and four instead of four and five on the season, you know, nine games in. But this would have been a fantastic win where you felt like, hey, we got a bonus win because nobody expected the team to win going into today's game. I didn't think the Chargers were going to win this game, but – I'm happy with the way they did lose. Honestly, I'd rather the offense plays well and we lose than than uh, the other way around. Keenan Allen, honest to God, not biased here, is a top five wide receiver in the NFL. This guy is ridiculous. 
with him on the field, you, nobody can guard him. And I think Justin Herbert did a great job of targeting him 14 times. I mean, at one point we were saying, who the hell else is he going to throw the ball to? Guy didn't look like he was lost on a, they call it a 50, 50 ball. I told Dave, that's a 10 90 ball the chance that he catches that there's no freaking chance <laughs> but Guyton had some nice plays Quinn and Johnson finally gets his first NFL touchdown it was good to see on the eighth freaking play within the three yard line but Keenan Allen Mario as long as we have him and Justin Herbert like, I really feel like they can be in any game I don't think anybody can guard Keenan Allen he's probably the best route runner I've ever seen ever and when Justin Herbert's on I think he's as good as any quarterback in the league his first touchdown people gave Herbert a lot of credit for a beautiful throw and it was an insane throw that route was gorgeous. The him going outside, back inside, like it was. He set his man up so perfectly, broke at this perfect timing, got free. That was amazing. That was one of those moments where, like, all right, Keenan, Keenan special. Also, dude, can we get him a helmet that doesn't take his chin and put it in his mouth after every freaking play? I mean, dude, after every freaking play, he has to fix his helmet. Dude, you, you've been in the league for like 10 years, and technology's catching up now. We got to be able to figure that one out, boys. Like, come on. Like, what's going on in there? Let's let's get on the science. Um, But I, to your point, this was like one of those losses where it's like it's a loss where you felt like you won in a way, right? Because of so many positives that you saw in this game because of the way it ended. But I would argue, ready for this spin zone, sit back and wait for this one here, fellas. <laughs> This is like a loss that you would really like if you're on the come up, right? If you're a team that's on the rise, right? Like the Texans. If the if Texans lost this game like this, it'd be like, you know what? They're in a step in the right direction. They're like, this is something brewing. When it's a team that's supposed to be an all-in right now, that has a window that we've all said, like, this could be the last year of this window, maybe next year. This is a game you go, no, there's no excuses. You win this game, right? Like, that. that's... I think that's like the different ways to see it, if you know what I mean, Dave. I could have explained that really, really bad. Again, not the brightest kid here. I understand. But, what, I, under, I understand yeah. what you're saying. The, I mean, the time is now, for Chargers. They're supposed to already be where the teams that, like the Texans, who know that you know we're moving in the right direction, are. You know, a couple things. There are a lot of veterans on this team. We, we've spoken about it a million times. You know, Keenan Allen's a veteran. He's been in the league a long time. Uh, just going back to something Josh said, he is the best route runner I've ever seen. And people say who are listening or not Charger fans going, you don't know what you're talking about. Dude, I, I've seen every one of Keenan Allen's games. I've seen most of them in person. I'm telling you, Keenan Allen is just an exceptional route runner. There are things that, that the camera doesn't pick up on when you're watching a game on TV. It was one of those games I was watching today. And it's maybe the first time I've thought this since Philip Rivers has been gone. But I was thinking Philip Rivers is at home. If he's watching this game going, I wish I was playing today. Because that was right up his alley. I mean, every one of those routes were right up what Philip Rivers used to do. And Keenan Allen would make it so those guys were wide open. Antonio Gates is the best route runner I think I've seen from a tight end until, you know, Travis Kelsey. But as far as this route running and get open, if you see Keenan Allen in person, you go to a Charger game in person, and realize he's he doesn't have the skills like a Jamar Chase has or, or you know, um, you know, you maybe even CeeDee Lamb. He doesn't have that crazy speed. He has crazy hands. He has crazy good feet. And I would I would put probably him and Edelman in the best I've ever seen to just create in space. And it looks like, you know, the other team is I didn't realize how good Keenan is. He's been doing this 10 years. And when healthy, he's outstanding. The problem is, let's be honest, he plays on the Chargers, a team that doesn't get a lot of publicity. Even when they knocked off the Jets, all the talk all week long was it was the Jets that lost, not the Chargers that won it. And Keenan had just a fantastic uh, catch when they needed it in that game too. Very, very good player. The deal is more as you said this is a team that's already supposed to be there i'd love to tell you the chargers are one of those teams that should be in the talk for a super bowl i mean right now we're just hoping they become a playoff team this defense right now help isn't coming right trade deadline is passed help's not coming these are a bunch of veterans that make a lot of money you're going to see a really uh, big transition in roster next year and unfortunately you can't keep a lot of the guys that make a lot of money but Derwin James was outstanding today, and and you go, okay, good. He's going to be around for a while. But as far as the other guys go, Thule's going to be around for a while. But Mac might be gone. Bosa might be gone. And you go, did you waste you know, some of the, the talent? If you have four or five guys that you think really are exceptional players, how do you not get those guys a little bit more help than what the Chargers have on defense? This defense cannot go far in the playoffs. It just can't. Things have to change dramatically. 
changed dramatically. And we said going into the show where I said four sacks between Bosa, Mack, and Thule, you're going to win this game. Well, they combined for zero. Joey Bosa put on a hell of a performance today. He had one tackle. Thule had one tackle. Clay Mack had four tackles. It's just not going to happen. And you see the Lions offensive line is one of the best in the NFL. But if those guys aren't getting after the quarterback, this is what happens. You play a team yeah. like the with Jared, like the Lions with Jared Goff, who's very accurate. This is what's going to happen. There's no chance the Chargers can stop anybody if they're not getting after the quarterback. Major, major changes need to happen. The linebackers are weak. The secondary is weak. Derwin James had a good game, led the team in tackles, but he gets another personal foul penalty. Actually, I thought it was questionable. I don't even think they should have called that one too. on him, but he gets another penalty. There's just a lot of issues with the defense, and that's what happens when you play a good team. We say the Bears and the Jets, yeah, we're happy we win these games, but it's the freaking Bears and the Jets. I mean, you're not going to play the Bears and the Jets in the playoffs. I wish. Are, Mario, do you think there's any chance this defense – do you think there's any chance this defense – has hope if we're not getting after the quarterback? Do you think it's like Michael Davis didn't play today? They're just going to have all their guns? I think it's a hmm. – I would say, honestly, we've seen it this year. Even with Davis in there, they fall short, right? Like It's not like Davis yep. is in there and then it's like, oh, the <laughs> Lions will go from 41 points to 30. Like, that's not going to happen. It's like, no, nah, they'll probably go 40 more. <laughs> like, you know, probably the exact same. So I think it's all comes down to the pass rush, man. It's like who can get in their face, who can disrupt, because if you let the QB survey the field on this secondary, like it's going to happen. And look, a physical front, good pass rushers make a secondary look pretty good. And a secondary can make a defensive front look very good because the quarterback, yeah. you know, can't find anyone open. He's stressed in the pocket, has to do something. Then he could run into a sack that Zach Wilson famously does. And you like, all right, but now we're in a good spot. But here's the thing, the secondary, it's not strong. If the pass rush, you mentioned it, if they don't get home, they're in big, big, big trouble. And we've seen it all through this year, and it's not going to get better, Charger fans. Matt LaFleur and Green Bay, yes, I don't think Jordan loves it. Matt LaFleur, not a dumb guy. Knows Staley's defense pretty well, too. Then you have Lamar Jackson after that. Patriots, you get a break, but then you get Sean Payton after that. Then you get a pretty fiery Raiders team after that. Then you get Josh Allen. Then you get Sean Payne again. And then to end it with a little ice on the cake, you get Mahomes. Like, it does not get easier. And the only thing I take away from this is, yes, Herbert played an amazing game, right? Final stat line was absolutely freaking ridiculous. 27 for 40, 323 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. Can he do that next week and next week and next week? And next week, because I hate to break it to the anyone listening, if we don't get that from Herbert, we're not winning. Not not these teams we have coming up. Not that's not how you beat these teams. Do you think there's any other way we can beat them, Dave? No, I mean the, the defense is a huge hole. Here's the deal: even though the Lions won by three, they they could have beaten the Chargers any which way. I mean they they shown it that they, they could run the ball and we had no way to stop it. They can throw the ball, we have no way to stop it. And it, people say, you know, going back to your argument, if there's anyone that's a Charger fan and saying, well, yeah, we not, might not play the Bears or Jets every week, but we aren't playing the Lions every week. Look, that's what you got to judge yourself. That's what you're talking about. You're talking about big-time games. You finish out the season, and you're going to face teams that have talent like the Lions have. And you got to figure it out. You just went through the schedule, Mario. Again, you're going to face the Chiefs a couple times. You're going to face teams with decent offenses. So, yeah, there are wins on the schedule, but they got to turn the corner at some point. And this goes all the way back to the conversation of losing the game to Jacksonville in the playoffs last year. At some point, you're expected to turn the corner. Dean Spanos is expecting the team to turn the corner. Tom Telesco is expecting it. Staley's expecting it. And I'm kind of interested to be honest with what the truth would be if Telesco says, I really haven't given this guy, meaning the head coach, the tools to have success. Or is Staley thinking the same thing going, you know what? I know what I'm doing. I didn't become dumb overnight. You don't. You didn't give me the tools to succeed. There are guys on this roster and guys that we start every Sunday that don't belong in the NFL. There are guys on this team that other teams would not want. Is the Charger roster deficient enough where you say, you know what, the general manager made a huge mistake on putting this roster together? I think the Chargers have focused a lot on their offense and not not enough on the defense for years. I think that's a thing that's been, definitely been a thing for the Chargers. J.C. Jackson move was the worst move of all time, not just for the Chargers, but like in the whole NFL. That's the worst signing ever. We talked about it on the last show that he apologized to the team for making a horrible decision. If you had a shutdown corner, which we thought J.C. Jackson was, then a lot of this wouldn't be a problem. 
you look at the explosive plays that the Chargers give up, and it's actually remarkable. David Montgomery, 75-yard run. Jameer Gibbs, 35-yard run. Khalif Raymond, 41-yard catch. St. Brown, 46-yard catch. Jameer Gibbs, 24-yard catch. Brock Wright, 25-yard catch. It's like not only are they giving up these plays, but they're like the longest plays ever all the time. Yeah. I, I, I just don't know if that's a issue with the talent or Brandon Staley. I think it's both, right? It can't just be one or the other. It's both. If you don't have Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald, are not a good defensive coach because I don't know how many teams you get the best corner in the league and the best defensive lineman on the same team. That's what the last team you had with the Rams. You're not going to get that at the Chargers. So are you a good coach if you can't make these guys better? I don't know. When they had that last one, I'm on St. Brown, when he had that last one on the last drive, and it was that crosser ran, I believe, like 30 yards. Was I the only one that thought, hey, maybe just let him score? Did, did, did you yeah. guys think that? Okay, because I thought that. I was like, you know what? They're going to score anyways. You guys can't stop them. Like, they're going to score. Let's just go ahead and lay down, take the shot, and move on. You know? Like, it's like, yeah, we'll just put Herbert back out there. He's playing really well. Let's just uh, – I'll go ahead and roll the dice and see what's going to happen after that. But like you mentioned it, Josh, if you don't stop explosive plays, you're, you're not going to win. And you're not a playoff team, right? Like, you're not. No. No. No, very, very frustrating. All right, so a couple things are with, with this show and, and, you know, getting a chance to talk about the game coming up and talking about the game right after. Of course, right now for all three of us, emotions are running high. Again, I told you, I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm kind of almost just sad that, you know, the mirror doesn't lie. And the mirror shows us that we can't play defense and we can't compete with the best of the best. And that's what we need to do. And I understand 41-38. And look, if you're the Lions, you might be upset too, saying, you know what, we give up a lot of points. You know, we weren't stopping them either. What's wrong with us? What happens when we face a team like the Niners or the Eagles? Are we going to be okay? Can't worry about Detroit. I will mention Detroit's fans, though, right now, because I love the fact that Detroit fans watch this and listen to this podcast on Thursday and jumped right in, and we're all over our comments on YouTube. Let me tell you something. I love fandom. I love when you talk about your team and you say, we I hate when people get mad at people for saying that or when people say you shouldn't buy a jersey or all this stuff. When you're all in, you're all in. And I love that. I, I'm for it. I don't care what team you root for. I love people that love this sport the way I love the sport. And when they're all in on, on the Lions or the Chargers or whoever else it is, and they kind of know what they're talking about, I'm, I'm all for it. Now, if you're a bandwagon guy and, and you, you say you're a Cowboy fan all of a sudden, you don't know who Troy Aikman was, that bothers me. You know, come on. <laughs> You don't know your team. You're just doing it yeah. because yeah, other people are wearing the star. But these Lions fans, and Mario has family from Detroit, as he's mentioned on the show before. Man, they've been hurting since 1947. So when you watch the game today and you see that beautiful stadium, I understand Ford Field's supposed to be beautiful. It's not nicer than SoFi. When you see those cutaway shots and they're showing Santa Monica and they're showing the they're showing um, the dock and they're showing the Pacific Ocean, doesn't look as looks a little bit better than Detroit. I'll tell you that. So, yeah, I'm taking a shot at your city. It's one of the biggest dumps in the United States, okay? Yeah, we <laughs> lost by three, but guess what? I watched the entire game with the garage door open wearing shorts. It was beautiful. And when you talk to me in six weeks, guess what? It's going to be warm and nice then, too. It's going to be 72 degrees on Christmas Day. So you can sit there and trash this all you want and rip me all you want. That's fine. But if we're going to sit there and talk trash and start ripping each other and you start yelling at me about the Silver Dome, I don't give a rat's ass. Dude, we're still in Southern California. It's still a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm with you. All the people that got on Mario saying there's no way Keenan Allen has 200 yards. If Keenan Allen would have stayed in the game the entire time, he would have absolutely had 200 yards. So credit to Mario. My boy's a genius. Don't let it go. <laughs> yeah. Don't let it go. Well, wicked no, smart. I love that's the best thing about sports when people talk crap. I love it. It's great. I I think this is a win, though, you can or a loss you can build off of, shockingly. I think the Chargers, there are some good things here. Justin Herbert didn't get sacked today. The coaching is is disgusting. Them, all right, Mario, let me ask you a question. Did you think when Justin Herbert is doing a quarterback sneak on the goal line and just getting his head and hand and everything just knocked around, you're like, well, this guy's a broken finger. Maybe this isn't a good idea. Or did you like it? I hated it. I hated it with everything in my body, especially with the – there's one of them when they are on the two, and even like Romo goes, that's a little – well, too much distance to go for that one. I was like, yeah, <laughs> too much distance. What were you thinking? Like, I saw him like more. Like, I thought Kellen actually called a pretty good game tag. I loved a lot of the calls he had. That, that was the only one I'm like, hey, buddy, you know, 
We don't have the best injury luck. In case you haven't heard, some of our training staff almost killed our quarterback like four <laughs> years ago. Yeah. So, like, I would maybe calm down on doing anything risky at the moment. Um, that that part was crazy to me. That yeah, that made no sense to me. That was a the old man. That's when I became an old man. You know, yelling on my lawn. You know, that's when that's when I went to high school with Dave. You know, like that's when you know I went there and World War II was going on and you know, <laughs> Ford uh, automobile just came out. Like it was just one of those where you just get you get pissed off. <laughs> Look, when they were going for it, and I tell you what, I will tip my hat to the Lions on this move. They stopped the Chargers like seven of eight times in a row. Yeah. It was insane. I mean, that was that was impressive. You know, if I if I'm the Lions, I'm like, damn right, we're Detroit tough. That was pretty cool. But as the Chargers, I'm like, what the hell is it going to take to get in? I mean, Josh and I are designing plays. I mean, it was ridiculous. You know, what do you do to get in the end zone here? <laughs> but I, I I'm with you guys on Justin Herbert, like. I'm looking around. I turn to Josh. I go, there are a lot of bodies. <laughs> Those are a lot of bodies. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. And you're going, man, we got to keep this guy healthy. What if he pops his shoulder out or breaks, you know, a hand that's his throwing hand? Um, yeah, I was a little bit, I was a little bit nervous by the play calling right there. You know, I tell you what, when it was Quentin Johnson that caught the touchdown, I was as shocked as anybody. Maybe almost as shocked as Quentin Johnson because at that point, I can't tell you how angry I was at Quentin Johnson. And everyone who says, well, you guys are too tough on him, dude, holy cow, man. It was just like, dude, please catch a ball. Please make a play. You know, what's going on here? And while we're at it, what the hell happened to Gerald Everett today? Zero catches. Yep. What happened? What happened to our double tight end set? <laughs> well, he had Gerald Everett wide open for like 20 yards down the field, and he overthrew him. That, Even his interception, Gerald Everett was open. He threw the interception. That interception was weird, man. That was one one of those things you never see from Justin Herbert. I got a I got a bugaboo that I want to talk about on the show that I don't <laughs> want to forget. How in the hell can you get a roughing the passer penalty and um, intentional grounding on the same play? How Thank is he you. supposed to throw the ball when he has a hand up in his face, up in his face mask? That doesn't make any sense. And Tony Romo said on the broadcast, and credit to Tony Romo, okay? Everybody wants to get after Tony Romo. He called the exact play that was going to happen like 10 times today. It is impressive. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care if you'd like him or not. It's impressive. And I know Kellen Moore was his backup quarterback, so they know what the hell is going on with each other. But that's impressive. Anyways, you cannot get an intentional grounding penalty when you have a hand in your face mask. That doesn't make any sense. He doesn't know where the hell he is. So how can he get a penalty on that? It doesn't make any sense. The Chargers got absolutely screwed. And then the Derwin James personal foul screwed again. That's just two things. I saw it. I'm turning into an old man, too. These things bother me. But Mario, did you agree? How the hell could those two things happen at the same time? I okay. There's two both things you said right there. I wrote down and talked about. I'm so happy you brought up one. I it it blew my mind. So I was I had a red zone and I did the illegal stream because I'm not paying for NFL, whatever. So sorry guys. So um, I'm like a little delayed. So I saw it twice and I go, did I like miss something? And I was like, that there's that just doesn't make any sense. Like there's just no no way like that. Come on, that's just like charge of luck. If that was the Chiefs, I bet they get it, by the way. We're going to have that conversation, but everyone freaking knows that. Um, also, I love Romo. He, You're right. He does get like a really bad rap with some people. Dude, I think he's, one, very entertaining and very just funny. Like just stuff he said, I think it's just very entertaining. And two, like he was really accurate today. Like calling out a lot of plays. Like you said, you know, he's obviously very familiar with uh, Moore and was very familiar with Dan Campbell. At the same time, like, give him credit when credit's due, man. He was calling plays all out there today. He was breaking it down pretty well, and he's entertaining, and he's funny. And I – favorite thing to hear every single Sunday, Dave. It's not the seven hours of commercial-free football. It's not that. It's a – I don't know, Jim. And we didn't get enough of that today. And I, I really <laughs> wish we did. He had a great game today. I almost think he should do every game he can or that they should look at it for when he can get a, a Kellen Moore situation because they, I was Josh said, they studied the same playbook. They knew each other. You know, they, they know exactly what's going on. And for me, as you know, when people say, I don't like when he tells me what's going to happen before it happens, why not? Don't you want to know what direction to look? Like if when I'm sitting there, I want to know exactly what Justin Herbert's going to look at. I want to see if he makes the right decision. So I like when Tony Romo does what he did today. I'm absolutely fine with it. I will say the play that Josh is talking about, 
was was strange because I think you guys are right on. Mahomes that plays is going to be called different. Here's mm-hmm. the deal: the the ref and the passer penalty should supersede the intentional grounding call. I mean, I'm sorry, but when your when your ear is in your armpit because some guy just whacked the upside of the head, he doesn't know where the hell the ball's going either. And, and how does he know? How is he able to to throw the ball with the same accuracy when he just got hit and smoked in the head? It didn't make any sense that those are offsetting penalties. Thank goodness it didn't hurt the Chargers in the long run. But at the same time, at, we were upset when the play was called. I mean, when the penalty was called to go, this is garbage. What do you mean we're going to replay the down? We're going to replay the down. Our, our uh, quarterback just got hit right upside the head. What keeps other teams from doing the same thing to other quarterbacks? I thought the whole idea was to protect the quarterback because once the quarterback goes down, that's the end of the season for that franchise. I thought that was the whole plan. It was very, very strange. One of those that... You know, look, no one's calling me about the rules committee, but that's one that needs to be revisited. It didn't make any sense that those were offsetting penalties. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's like saying, uh, I got punched in the arm, so I'm going to punch you in the nuts. And we both got punched, so we're even. It's like, we're not even. Yeah. You punched me in the nuts. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't count. That's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. Also, uh, Justin Herbert, play the game, or play the season, excuse me. The pass to Jalen Guyton for a touchdown up the seam that missed the guy's fingertips by this much on the Lions was so freaking impressive. Like, I don't think people make enough big, big of a deal about it as it should be. Like, nobody's making those throws. Maybe Josh Allen or some guys have crazy arms, but those throws are remarkable. And only Justin Herbert and, like, two other people on the whole planet can do that. Amazing, Mario. I love watching stuff like that. Is there anything that you saw today that you thought was strange or something that you wrote down your notes you want to talk about? Yeah, there, there's a couple things. One... um, I want, I'm I'm a fanboy of him, but I want more Darius Davis in space. I want more of that. Yeah. I want more of him going off to the side and he's the dump down, just standing there waiting, waiting, waiting. I want more of that action because him in open space is a guaranteed five every single time, and I'm gonna take that. Um, after this loss and the offense put up 38 points, which should be a guaranteed win, and they lost again. I went back in our the glorious tenure of Brandon Staley as the Los Angeles Chargers head coach and picked up every single time the Chargers shouldn't win a game, but simply give it too many points. 2021 Chargers against the Raiders. Chargers put up 32 points, lose to the Raiders. I was obviously the playoff, pretty much playoff game to go to the playoffs. Um, against the Texans, the Chargers offense puts up 29 points. Again, probably should win that game, 29 points. Defense gives up 41 points. 2022 Chargers uh, put up 30 points against the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is in the playoffs. Jacksonville, 31 points. Again, Chargers, 30 points. Come on, you should be able to win that game. Chargers, 28 points. Broncos, 31. That's a game when all of your starters played about a quarter too long, and then Williams got hurt. And once again, masterclass by Brandon Staley. And then, of course, the Chiefs game. Chargers put up 27 points versus Chiefs. Chiefs put up 30. Just all classic examples of the reoccurring pattern of the defense. When the defense strikes, the offense doesn't. When the offense strikes, defense is nowhere to be found. 38 points, guys, and Dave, it just goes in the folder. It just adds to the masterclass of stupidity by Brandon Staley of your quarterback had an MVP-level game, MVP-level game, and you let him down. And if you're Herbert, like, is this something at the end of the season? You just go to Telesco, go, hey, what the hell? Like, he's not even 100% he's doing this. I don't know what Justin Herbert is. I mean, we kind of have these conversations with Justin Herbert. You know, I don't know. I wish he was that guy. You know, I think Aaron Rodgers, he would get sick of him because he would think he carries it too far, right? We know Tom Brady used to speak up, but they didn't listen to Tom either. You know, Tom would take less money on his contract just so they would promise, hey, we're going to go out and get you some stars to put around you, and they never did. You know, I was like, well, what did you guys do with Tom's money? You know, if I was Tom, I would have been pretty upset about it sooner than he was upset about it. Not saying Tom needed money to eat, but at the same time, the money says you are what you are. So when you're the 26th highest paid player in the league, like Tom Brady was, when everyone knew he was the best player in the league, he was doing it because they promised him players. Justin Herbert wants to win. I don't care who you are. If you play sports, whether it's a team sport or an individual sport, you want to win. That scoreboard matters to you. And if I'm Justin Herbert, I'm getting in the car and I'm going home. I'm going, I literally p- played one of the top five best games of my life today and we lost. I can't do anymore. This is the best I can possibly do, and we lost. 
and we might have lost to a team that might not even be a Super Bowl team, but we lost. And so how come the organization can't figure out what to do? I will I would say this to Justin Herbert, anybody that knows him. The organization's not a mind reader, Justin. And if you don't say anything, you don't do exactly what Mario just said a second ago and, and say exactly what you want, they're going to assume that you're content with what's going on, which means you're going to be known as Archie Manning and Phillip Rivers and those quarterbacks that, that never won, that were good but never won. And man, if you want to be a legend, you got to win championships and you got to play in the biggest games. But I hope Justin Herbert doesn't wait till his 30s to complain and go, man, time's running out. I can see the end of the road. Maybe I should have said something before because it's not going to be too long before the guys we know as Chargers, meaning Keenan Allen and Bosa and Derwin James and Khalil Mack and all those guys start retiring. Austin Eckler more than likely is not going to be on the team even next year. They start leaving. You know, Herbert's going to look around and go, man, I'm the last one here. I'm the longest standing charger, and we still haven't done anything. He'll be Dude, Will Smith, don't, don't Fresh Prince of Bel Air meme when he's going to say it. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Damn it. Exactly right. I mean, don't be afraid to make things public because right now it looks like everything is fine. I, and it starts to bother me as a fan of, of Justin Herbert, and all three of us are fans, to go, dude, you deserve better. You played great today. You deserve better. You deserve to win. You deserve to win. I, you cannot miss with def- with defenders, you know, drafting defenders and free agents and expect to win in this league. Look at the Raiders. The guys yeah. who expect to make plays on this team, I already talked about it. Bosa, Mack, and Tooley didn't do much today. You got Marlowe, who's who's been playing well. He only has one tackle. Morgan Fox only has one tackle. This is the thing, Mario. When you have those, these guys, and I'm just going to talk about Bosa, Mack, and Tooley because those are my three favorite guys right now, what they provide to the team against the Bears and the Jets and, and a lot of the games they played this year. You expect them to win. I mean, that's that's what I expect. Even if you're going against a good offensive line like the Lions, you expect these three guys to get theirs because that's what good players do and some great players do. They get theirs. You cannot have Joey Bosa have one tackle. You cannot have Tuli have one tackle. That just does not get it done. There, you got three guys. It's not like they're game planning. We're just going to stop Khalil Mack. You got three guys. If you got three guys on the field, they all are going to get some of some good looks to beat a guy. You got to win. You got to win. You got to pro- provide pressure on Jared Goff. They need to give Cameron Dacre some help. This guy's automatic. He doesn't even yeah. get on the field. Yeah, guy's freaking automatic. Get him and Justin Herbert some help. Justin Herbert's not going to raise hell. I need I need more weapons. He's not that guy. Quentin Johnson, Mario, I want to talk about this too. If you look at the box score, it says he had four catches on four targets. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> That's not exactly what happened. And you mentioned it in our text message. He has a Chase Claypool thing going on here. He had two plays, right, where he the guy grabs his jersey. They call the penalty. But he has the chance to catch the ball. It goes both off of both of his hands both times. One of them, the first one, would have been a touchdown because, as Tony Romo said, who had a great game today, as we already talked about, the safety was on the other side of the field. There was nobody on that side of the field. If Quinn and Johnson would have held on to that ball, that's a touchdown. Two times that happened. Do you think Quinn and Johnson, do you think he should have caught those balls, their penalties? Are you just happy that the Chargers you know, got the first downs? Because for me, I'm looking at it saying, dude, those should be touchdowns or at least long plays. The first one, especially, I was like, dude, that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. And momentum changer, right? Yeah. B- big momentum changer. You get the rookie who has a break, long touchdown run. Oh, and like, dude, Johnson could have gotten so many people to shut his mouth. I mean, shut everyone else's mouth about like comparing him to Zay Flowers, Addison. But like, you know what? Yeah, here's, look this, you know, like shut this up. You know what? And like, Poop it out or something like that. That's what that's exactly what I thought of. I'm like, this is that was one of those plays where you look back and you go, This was the right move. I see where the, our thought process was on this player, but instead it's going another disappointment, another fall short. And to kind of kind of with that, do we think Keenan plays next week? Because I don't think so. I think he doesn't play, Dave, and I think he plays against the Ravens, if I had to guess. Do you really believe that? You well, I mean, you don't know the severity of the injury. He did leave with three minutes remaining in the third quarter and came back. Mm. I mean, and he mm-hmm. scored a touchdown. I mean, here's the deal: if I'm Keenan Allen, I'm going. You know, stats are important to me too. And guess what? I've chance to put up some pretty good stats against the Packers. Like, and it's a grass field, as you always hear these guys all the time. They want to play in a grass field. Um, man, I hope Keenan plays. I, I really do. I mean, it always seems like it's a matter of time before he gets hurt and he misses games especially when you saw it happen last year and you've seen it early on in his career. 
Hell, I traded him in fantasy football this week. Not going to lie, just because I'm saying it's only a matter of time. So I'm going to get rid of him before he gets rid of me. <laughs> and I, and I, I traded him just because he does get hurt. I hope he's healthy, Mario. There was something that happened today. As you guys talked about Tony Romo, I'm really glad you brought this up or reminded me by dropping his name again, Josh. Are we just going to act like Tony Romo didn't say that word on the street is Quentin Johnson's dumb as a rock and he can't read a playbook? Thank you for bringing I mean, that up. Yeah, how many times did Tony Romo say it today? Hey, he's just not picking up the playbook. Hey, he'd get more playing time if he picked up the playbook. Who do you think's telling him that? His good friend Kellen Moore is telling him that. He had a bunch of information on Quentin Johnson today, basically saying Kellen Moore says the guy's talented. We drafted him number one. Dumb as a rock. He can't pick up the playbook. He literally said it like three or four times. Did, am <laughs> I the only one like that picked that up? He yeah, didn't, he didn't say, say he's that. dumb as a rock. He didn't yeah. say he, he he didn't say he's dumb as a rock. But, come but on. he said, he, he said, yeah, yeah, he said he he's said dumb it. as a rock. So this was the confusing thing because he did say it twice, I believe, right? You heard it t- two times. I heard at it two least times, two times where he said he's not picking up the playbook. So he's hearing it from Kellen Moore. And then he said it right after a play where Darius Davis catches a screen pass and Quentin mm-hmm. Johnson did not know what play it was. And, and Darius yeah, Davis gets block. blown up. He went out for a pass and, instead of the block. Exactly. And then Quentin Johnson, I think he put his head or grabbed his head or something. He knew he screwed up. But then Tony Rumble drops it right there and says he doesn't know the place. That's – I don't know, man. I'm, I don't know what to say. I mean, you're in the NFL, dude. What else do you have going on? You don't have to go to class anymore. Just learn the plays. And I know it's really hard to learn the plays. It's harder than people probably think to learn these plays. But you're not the quarterback. you got to learn your routes. And I know you're going to be interchangeable with the slot and the, and the outside receiver. But you still got to learn your routes. Everybody else has to learn them. Why can't you? And – I also get it too. Like, is was it an audible call? Like, you know, would something change at the line? But at the same time, it's like, dude, just know your freaking like know your play. And also, well, we all want him to know the. We all want him to know the plays. That was embarrassing. Yeah, that, that was, was embarrassing. Embar- that, that was embarrassing. But again, if I'm Quentin Johnson and I, you know, it gets back to me because I'm sure his parents or friends are going to say, "Dude, Tony Romo says you don't know the playbook." That you're going. Well, who the hell would have told Tony Romo that? Well, yeah. guess what? It came from inside the locker room. The guys are supposed to have my back ratted me out on national TV. So Can hey, either it's your your oh. it's either Kellen Moore or Staley told Tony Romo, hey, guess what? Our number one pick can't learn the playbook. And this is all he does. This is all he has to do since we dropped him. By the way, we gave him millions of dollars to learn it, but he can't pick it up. So, man, I'd be upset if I'm Quentin Johnson. I'm upset if I'm Justin Herbert. And imagine if it wasn't Justin Herbert, it was a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. Dude, Aaron Rodgers wouldn't even allow him on the field. He would tell he would tell his coach, dude, do not put that guy on the field. We see what Aaron Rodgers does to players that he thinks aren't on the same page as him. He's lucky Justin Herbert puts up with it. Also, he should big apology to Darius Davis. There's not, nothing more of a dirtbag move than – blowing up a screen pass for your boy like that that hit for people that don't know is one of the worst hits in football and it truly sucks and i've been on the other side of that and i've taken the football and i've thrown it at my teammate i've been so mad <laughs> it is, is not a is one of the worst feelings of all time so yeah up him on that one and to your point manning would have gone insane you know yeah. like that that's very much it's it's a simple thing learn the playbook and it's very good pickup i like forgot about that guys that that's a that's a little worrisome because like you said they don't you don't just make that up on the spot like they there's interviews before these games they they talk before these games mario i I got a request i got a request mario we got to retire two things and it's not just it's not us it's the broadcast i'm requesting two things get retired all right the first one is brandon staley has balls he goes for it more than any coach in league bull crap okay he used to (laughs) that's not a thing anymore Pay attention. Dan Campbell has freaking nuts. He's the South Park. He's Randy Marsh with the nuts. Yep. <laughs> that's that's Dan. running the ball on fourth and five, buddy. You got the biggest nuts in town. You're you're crazy, buddy. And it it worked. All right. They got to retire. The Brandon Staley goes for it more than any other coach. You got to stop saying that. And then St. Brown can name the 14 other receivers or whatever that were drafted ahead of him. We got to retire that too. All right, dude. We've heard it so many times. They said it again on the broadcast today. We get it. He's upset. He's proven he's better than like all those guys. All right, let's move forward. Right, do you agree with Please. me on this? Those two things. Enough. Yes. It, they run it's it like into this, the ground. Into the ground. It's like when two guys go to the same high school and they go, did you know? 
I think it was at the same high school. Like, whoa. No way. Yeah. Every time yeah. Teddy Bridgewater or Mari Cooper play, you know, they were teammates in Florida. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we know, dude. You say it every freaking yeah. time. Yeah. Zach Levine and Bradley Beal. No way. <laughs> Insane. I can't and believe Trace- two guys from the same high school. Just right straight to Tracy. It's Tracy Wilson. Is she the one that was sideline reporter today? Hey, let's come up with some new facts. But when anyone says Brandon Staley, by the way, goes for it more than any other coach, it shows me they don't watch Charger football. They just don't. They just yeah. remember what happened a couple of years ago. It just shows me you aren't paying attention to what's happening. It has dramatically changed over the last two years. So don't stop dropping that line. It's embarrassing. It's just, it's just ridiculous, man. I'm with you, Josh. Those are two great observations that I roll my eyes every time. I got it. You can name every guy that was drafted ahead of him. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Um, play the hits, though. It's still still my fave. Herbert scrambles yeah. for first down. Sneaky athlete. He's pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> that's that dude. I will, that's my favorite <laughs> every time. I'm going to start recording them and posting them every time. I love them so much. That's oh sneaky athlete. All right, That's before too, we get out of here, let me go uh, YouTube comment of the day, okay, from our last show. And I, you guys got to fix your names because I don't know how the hell to pronounce these. It says it says Mickey Carroll 3563, I believe. Yo, which is a great way to start a sentence. Yo, mm. what do y'all think about Staley denying momentum? The Eagles pride themselves in it. So I didn't see uh, Staley say this, but I'm just going to assume you're right. If any coach denies momentum, you're an idiot. That's such a real thing. We made fun of it on the last show, how Dave would always talk about momentum and you know it's an advance it's actually a real thing because if you like today the Chargers had momentum on offense right five drives in a row to yeah. end the game they scored touchdowns momentum is such a real thing if I was a coach I would totally pride myself in it like the Eagles do what do you guys think that's something I totally would play yeah uh if you don't think that watch March Madness it's like 90 percent of that's momentum you know like yep. college football at home, when it's an upset, about 90% of those are momentum. You know, Dave, like, it's just, come on. It's a, it's a common theme in sports. And, uh, yeah, shout out to the names, too, by the way. Let's simple them down. And if you're if you're going to make it difficult, I always say, if you're going to make it di- difficult, make it funny. Give me a giggle. Yeah, it's exactly what you see. I mean, you, basketball was perfect, especially the NBA, man. It used to be, uh, you know, again, stepping back. But Pat Riley, I always thought, was a great coach. He always stopped the other team's momentum. Same thing. When a team believes they can beat you, and you believe that the team can beat you, man, you gotta you gotta stop it because it's all in the mind. If you can get in someone's head and go, you can't stop me, you got to change that mindset as fast as you can. I believe in the the momentum thing too, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, it's I don't know, man. It, it's one of those again. Unless you played, you know, you run into guys all the time in different sports that are executives that really never played, but they went to an Ivy League school, so they have all the, the saber metrics. And you're going, dude, you have no idea what these guys are going through. You don't know what it's like to be on the mound or be a quarterback in the pocket. You have no idea what happens less than two minutes of, of what, what they're focused on and what they're trying to block out. You just don't know. And you don't know what hurts either. Just like you brought up Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's as good as anybody. You don't know what, how, how severe his injury is. And that goes for anyone. It's easy for anyone to say, get out on the field. You walked off, so walk on to the next one. You don't know how things are going to settle with. And you don't know which guys are honest with trainers. You don't know anything. So uh, I, I I believe, honestly, I think a lot of it has to do with being in someone else's shoes to understand exactly what's going on. And uh, the mind game is is 100% real. The momentum things, I think, is real. Aren't you the one that called Joey Bosa and Austin Eckler wussies? Yeah, I, I do believe that. Uh, Bosa, <laughs> not Eckler. I don't think – I don't think yep. – I'm sorry. Did Joey Bosa have one more tackle than me today? Tackle guess for loss. Was a tackle for loss. Dude, he fell down. <laughs> fell on top of the guy. <laughs> That was a weak yeah. tackle for loss. That wasn't even a good one. That was like doesn't even go in the highlight film. That was a weak tackle for loss. But give me a break, man. I mean, one more tackle than me. Come on. It just it just I, mean, I expect more from Joey Bosa. I, I mean, it's funny. I called it, I called it, I called it the Rodrigo kid last year that was on hard knocks to Josh. I yeah, go, what happened to Rodrigo? It doesn't even exist. Guess what? He had three more tackles than Bosa today. I didn't even know he was on the field. I mean, <laughs> dude, seriously, Bosa did nothing. And you know why there weren't enough cameras? Red light. He's Joey. had a good year. He's had a good year. No, he hasn't. Dude, yes, he on. has. Enough. Enough. Good year. Um, okay. To tie tie the knot on the momentum, just quick thing, because it's, it's my favorite thing when people talk momentum. Uh, shout out to the goat and handling momentum because and when everyone zigged, he zagged. Shout out Roy Williams when the other team would go on like a 15-0 run, and he refused to call timeout. Then his players would look at him, he'd just go get it up the floor. 
<laughs> yeah, that's Hollywood, dude. He, he did. Yeah, he did. Marcus Page would look at him and goes, "Dude, just get the ball up the floor." Like he'd be yeah, like, uh, "Zeller, run, run the poop." Like he just, <laughs> was like, dude, would go like a twenty-eight to four run, and he'd just be standing there, just so <laughs> love this. <laughs> that's fun. So here's a little backstory on this show, and Mario brings that up. We didn't know this, but all well, obviously Josh and I knew we were, but we didn't know anything about Mario. That uh, when we put the show together, it took maybe a couple months to realize that all three of us are diehard North Carolina basketball fans. Oh, and yeah. it just happened to be. We didn't. It just it was an accident. That's why the Roy Williams line is funny as hell. The three of us. Everyone else like who the hell is Roy Williams? I mean, the guy that played for the Cowboys. No, not that guy. No, we're talking about the basketball <laughs> coach for North Carolina. But good yeah, win that, today right. too. Good win today. Yeah. <laughs> good win. Tied, today. It right in the charge game. So here we go. Oh my gosh! All right. So when we come back in a couple of days, we'll get a better uh, idea of what's going on in the AFC West. Raiders have the night game tonight against the Jets. We'll see if momentum's real for those guys. We'll, we'll talk about that as well and see where the Chargers are at. We'll look at the upcoming schedule for, obviously, the Chiefs, the Broncos, the Raiders, and, of course, the Chargers, and try and figure things out a little bit, how things open up. Um, the AFC North is for real. Big upset today in, in Baltimore. And at the same time, hopefully some of these guys start knocking each other off where it opens a door for the Chargers to make the postseason. See what happens. But we'll get all, get all that taken care of in a couple of days. So for Mario Heron, Josh Pelle, I'm Dave Pelle. Once again, Chargers lose today. Uh, disappointing game, uh, 41-38 to the Detroit Lions. We'll see you in a couple of days. Please, uh, of course, leave a comment on YouTube. And if you're listening through the Bolt City podcast, through the Odyssey app, thank you so much. But we do appreciate the comments. Detroit, it's all in fun. It's just sports, baby. Also, uh, tarps off for next show and uh, getting a tan for it. So tune in and subscribe and have your grandmother subscribe. 